Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for November 23rd, 2022. Well, yesterday we had a pretty good shot of buying going into the market. We saw the Dow breaking through this recent high in the chart, but we're still challenged by this resistance high above that, and it is a significant resistance high. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. I apologize yesterday I didn't get a chance to answer those video comments. Um, had a little bit of a health problem. I'm still struggling today um, a bit, so uh, please bear with me here. Um, as we look at um, the Dow, we still have that very bullish sign here that we're breaking above that downtrend here in the chart, and we've held that area as support. So we're looking very, very bullish um, um, in that pattern. However, we still have a really substantial resistance level in the chart with a lot of congestion and consolidation in here. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not we can continue to push this on through or if we have that possibility that we could catch a pushback. Now, if we look at this chart, as you can see, our, uh, our, our, our uh, bullishness will be if we can push through that resistance, if we can get enough um, buying support in here from the bulls to push through there then I think we're, we're just gonna have to say, look, we, we may run all the way back to the new highs despite the issues that we see in the overall economy. If we have those bears come back in, well, once again, that support level is gonna be down here for us to be watching here in the chart. If we take a look at our technicals here, technicals are extremely bullish even though we are so extended. Notice that our short-term moving averages are trying to catch up, but we're, we're struggling to catch up with the price. The price is running so hard and fast. Kind of an interesting situation here in the market. And if we take a look at um, uh, something that's gonna help give it a little bit of help here this morning, John Deere reporting this morning and gapping higher, as you can see, um, right into all-time high resistance here on John Deere. So John Deere has recovered absolutely completely um, despite, um, you know, market conditions here. So pretty amazing um, how we've been running some of these stocks right back up to highs. Um, let's take a look at our SPY, SPY. Also, nice day yesterday pushing up, but unfortunately the SPY was not able to break through that resistance like the Dow was able to do. So we still have that resistance in the chart to be watching if those bulls are inspired today then we may be able to push through that level. If they're unable to be inspired and those bears come back to, into inspiration, again, that support level here, kind of a wide range chop zone here in the chart. But you still gotta give this up to the bulls because we're holding onto that upside trend. Let's take a look at our um, technicals here in the chart. One of the things that we may have to watch carefully here is this 200 day moving average. Um, while we're well above our 500 day, notice our 500 day is just now starting to show a little bit of turn to the upside and that 200 day up here could be serving as a little bit of a resistance area in the chart. So watch that close. Our NASDAQ continues to struggle here, although we had a nice little bounce up yesterday. You'll notice in this chart, we were bouncing off of a support level here in the chart. And as we re uh, move this up, well, we did break through, back through that little resistance area in the chart on the NASDAQ. But if we were to uh, technically look at this, we can see that we really didn't resolve anything here in that chart just yet. A Little bit of a wedging pattern here 
um, you might call it a pennant pattern if you use the the bottom side of that so still a little bit of question here on the nasdaq and if we push this up to here you can see we have a very significant resistance in the chart so if those bulls are inspired we'll look for a test up in here and if those bears happen to be inspired we're going to look for this area down here to try and serve as support so watch that closely again technically in in these charts you'll notice that not near as ex uh, much ex uh, as extended as we see in the SPY and the QQQ. Still trying to hold in here around that 50 day moving average on the NASDAQ, struggling here quite a bit um, in the chart. QQQ's 200 day moving average is continuing to decline. And as you can see, the 50 day moving average is now flattening out a little bit, but still overall has that little bit of decline in it. So haven't really turned the corner on the NASDAQ. If we take a look at our IWM, IWM also holding in this bullish upside pattern here, um, but we are struggling more to the low side of this congestion area here than we have been to the top side of the congestion. Now notice yesterday we had another bullish move here in the market, kind of stretched us up there just a little bit, but well, maybe not ready to just celebrate yet saying we're going to just take right off and go to the upside you'll notice right here what we ran into is that resistance level right here we're trying to um, find inspiration to break through that this morning so keep an eye on that if those bulls find inspiration to break through here and then maybe we come back up and retest this level if those bears find inspiration we're going to look for that support level down in here again to see if that can hold us Technically on this chart, as you can see, um, we still uh, are struggling with that 200 day moving average. We may have an opportunity to pop on through there here in the next few days. We'll keep an eye on that. But we could also run into that resistance level. It kind of all depends on how that data comes out for this morning. So speaking of that, let's take a look at the other things that we might want to uh, take a peek at the VIX. yesterday continued to drop hard now it's remarkable to me with the kind of economic problems that we have um, in the country and around the world that our vix is back down here around 20 handles so i think we've built in tremendous complacency into the market right now um, we'll want to watch that pretty closely if they continue to drive this lower it, it's honestly remarkable when we see the economic conditions um, that we face around the world. Um, and not only there, but, but here, that that is the case. So watch that carefully. I think we might be getting pretty darn complacent um, in this rally to the upside that's mostly been led by the Dow. As you can see in those index charts, the Dow is lifting everything up. So we've got 30 companies doing the majority of the work here. Um, in the market. If we take a look at our T2122, T2122, well, unfortunately, that rally yesterday pushes us right back up here into that bearish re resistance zone in the chart, that reversal zone up here. Now, we've lingered up here for quite a while in um, this pattern, and we still have a little bit of upside opportunity. So perhaps if we can find a little bit more inspiration in these numbers today, we push right up into that high point here and we've done that a couple three times here recently there's no reason to believe we can't do it again but we have to also recognize the fact that we're pretty stretched out here particularly in the Dow and if we find reason for bearish inspiration then we've got a very big opportunity um, to pull back here in the market so watch that close and if we look at our T21 08, our T2108 ticked up yesterday, but notice it didn't tick up all that much. Considering how far we moved in the Dow yesterday, you would have thought we'd have had a little bit more um, rally in here. And I think the reason is, guys, is because we're not getting that same kind of raucous bullishness coming in the um, SPY, the QQQ, and IWM. A little bit more of a lag there. So again, it's the Dow leading everything. 
but I have to give this to the bulls because we continue to hold above these support levels in the chart. Now, remember in August when we rallied up here, um, that was a very high area in our T2108. We were up there around 80% 80, um, 80 of the stocks above their 50-day moving average. And you can see if we go back here in time over a few years, there's very few times we've ever been that bullish um, here in uh, the market. So just kind of keep that in mind. We're, uh, we're up here in um, kind of rarefied air at the moment. And a pullback at any time should not be too much of a surprise. And then if we look at our T2107, well, similar situation here. We're well above our August high here. So they have pushed us up substantially here in the chart, but we had a lot further to go here um, in T2107 to improve. And we've certainly done that. Now, what you'll want to pay attention to is a fairly significant level of price resistance right through this area. Doesn't mean we can't go higher in this chart, but we also want to watch that we may be just a little bit um, extended here in the short term. But I still have to give this to the bulls because there's been no pullback here, no, um, no uh, test of this support level um, in the chart. So we're still holding in there very, very strong. And you can see on the T2107, we actually ticked just a little bit higher yesterday with some of those stocks coming back up out of that 200 day or getting above their 200 day moving average. So uh, keep an eye on that. That's a bullish chart. If we look at our T2101, our T2101, um, we continue to show that lack of uh, momentum here in the market um, with that hooking back to the, the downside. So keep an eye on that. We've had some interesting trends here with big whips um, in the market and you can see um, we rallied back up into some of that downtrending um, resistance area and, and then that momentum has kind of pulled back and we see that when we take a look at um, our volume. If we take a look at volume on the diamonds yesterday, the diamonds came up nicely. So there was a big push there in the Dow. But if you take a look at the SPY and take a look at the QQQ, volume was very, very low yesterday. Um, IWM also very, very low yesterday. They were pushing all of their efforts into making everybody feel like the market is just extremely bullish by moving 30 stocks, not moving a lot of the other indexes. So you'll want to watch that kind of carefully. If this, if this were to break, um, uh, that could be a problem here. So just be kind of careful. If we um, take a peek at our economic calendar for today, we've got a busy day here on the economic calendar with quite a few reports that could move us around. Well, first, we're going to have those mortgage application numbers here this morning. Durable goods, they're expecting durable goods to remain flat. So watch that at 8.30 before the market opens. We've got jobless claims. Remember, jobless claims are going to be one of those interesting numbers again, where if the number comes in with good jobs growth, that's going to be bad for the market. If, the, if we suddenly start to see um, increases in uh, jobless claims, then that's going to be seen as a positive for the market. So watch that close. And there may be a reason. We've heard, you know, Amazon laying off 10,000. There's a report of um, HPQ yesterday, Hewlett Packard going to be laying off uh, four to 6,000 people. Um, there's going to be quite a few of those coming around here and may start ticking up um, in those jobless claims numbers. So watch that close. Um, our PMI flash comes shortly after the market open. We've got new home sales. We know those new homes or home sales have been a bit problematic for us here um, in the market. So keep an eye on that consumer uh, sentiment number, which is one of my favorite numbers. Um, that's not been looking all that good. If the consumers aren't happy, typically the market's not happy, but um, watch that close. We've got petroleum status. And then later on the day, we've got um, the uh, natural gas and we're even throwing in a FOMC minutes here today. So lots of potential for volatility today. But one thing you probably want to watch for is a pretty sharp decline in volume as traders are traveling. Uh, folks are heading out for their holiday plans. They piled all of this into a day 
where there's going to be a lot of empty trading floors um, around the country. So um, just be a little bit careful. Now, keeping in mind, Thursday, the market is closed and Friday is only a partial day. So um, watch that watch that carefully you'll typically see extremely low volume a lot of algorithmic trading in the market um, just working to generate some fees not much happening um, as a typical um, on friday after that and then also keep in mind the following monday we still could have folks returning from their vacation or holiday plans and um, it's not unusual to see uh, the Monday following uh, Thanksgiving to be pretty low volume as well. So kind of keep that in mind as you plan forward. For right-way options, obviously, we'll be closed um, on Thursday, and we'll have our trading rooms open on Friday, but I'm not going to be trading. I'm not going to be there. So um, just kind of keep those things in mind. Then if we take a look um, at our... Um, earnings calendar today we have a really light day on earnings first off i i mentioned we had john deere john deere reporting today a little pop and drop going on in here nice bullish move to the upside um, running into the resistance of all-time highs here in john deere and then we have s sentinel one will be reporting today um, so keep an eye on that obviously not the major notable that john deere is but um, really the only other one that I could come up with that would have any notability for the day. If we take a look at our um, some stocks that could be setting up for today, um, I, I want to be, before I talk about that, guys, I want to be really careful in letting folks know that low volume markets are very very dangerous to trade and we can have big whipsaws and big changes that occur over a holiday time so as i show you these um, please kind of keep that in mind that you should um, make sure you're doing your own due diligence for these trades and being very very careful about how you approach the market i have really burned myself many times by over trading um, during a holiday season and then something occurs and we get a big reversal um, um, after, after the holiday. Um, so be kind of careful here and, and be careful not to over trade um, a market like this. Trading out of boredom is never a good idea. So with that guys, if you could do me a quick favor before we move on, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube if this is the first time you've seen these videos and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. Um, and then if you feel the video is worthy or helpful for your trading day, if you could please do me that favor, click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. I truly appreciate it. I should be back on that case today. I have to tell you, I'm still not feeling very good, but um, um, we're working on it. So um, I'm, I'm fine, nothing to worry about, I'm just not feeling very good. So um, let's take a look at some of these stocks that, well, look pretty darn good overall. First off, I want to mention um, the um, U.S. dollar. Now, the U.S. dollar pulled back. We've had strengthening of the Japanese yuan. And as long as the dollar um, continues to weaken, we could see some pretty good moves in commodity prices. So yesterday, I was keeping a, a little bit of an eye here on GLD as... Um, uh, the dollar was shooting up yesterday morning, um, and um, interestingly enough, the gold didn't really move all that much um, on the day. So um, I've been keeping an eye on this support level in here, and as gold rests or pulls back, I'm going to be watching for that next opportunity in here. If the dollar continues to slide, there may be a reason to be buying up some gold here on the day you'll notice that we're breaking downtrend we're holding some support levels in the chart so we're looking for that next um, upside opportunity that that establishes an upside trend so watch that closely silver silver might be another place uh, to be keeping an eye on because you'll notice we've had that resting pullback here as the dollar shot back up we're holding some support levels here in the chart, and we may be starting to establish a little bit of an upside trend here 
in that chart may need a little bit more rest but if we see the dollar continuing to fall I would look for SLV to perk back up. Um, other places in that commodity area that you want to be taking a look at, um, take a look at copper, SCCO. Um, very interesting chart. Big breakout here from resistance. Notice we've got some resistance up here to deal with, but this little resting pullback that's occurring in here. Again, if we see the dollar fall, we might see things like copper. Um, FCX would be another chart to keep an eye on. Notice how we've been moving up in this trend as that dollar weakens. We're going to see some of these com commodity prices move back up. Take a look at um, Steel Dynamics. Steel Dynamics has been very strong here in the chart. And even as the dollar shot up yesterday, this is just taking off like a rocket to the upside. This is an all time high in STLD. So a little bit of rest or pullback here in Steel Dynamics, I think sets up another opportunity to the upside. So keep an eye on STLD, US Steel. US Steel has been moving up to test some resistance levels in the chart. Again, a weakening dollar should have um, um, commodity prices moving higher. And I would expect stocks like US Steel and things like that to be moving higher. So watch those things closely here in the chart. If you want to pick up like a commodity tracking ETF, you might take a look at DBC. It's not performed that well yet. So keep an eye on this. Kind of an interesting situation here. We're holding a big level of price support and we're chopping in this tight range. But yesterday um, we shot up a little bit and we're gapping down this morning and looking to move back up. So interesting in DBC, but watch that carefully. If we were to pop out of this range, that could really be substantial for a potential trade. Um, you might want to take a look at utilities. Utilities have been performing really quite well here overall. Nice upside move here to the upside. We're seeing a lot of price support in there and moving through to the upside here in utilities. And then I'm going to have to go back to those energy stocks. Um, um, if we take a look at ExxonMobil, ExxonMobil popping up to test um, highs here in the chart. Looks like we're getting a little pop and drop on the morning here. Um, but keep an eye on those. Even as we see, you know, the potential of really high COVID numbers in China, possible demand destruction, a lot of these stocks have been holding up quite well. And if you take a look at overall, if you want an ETF, XLE really shot up yesterday. We're going to struggle with some price resistance in the chart. It looks like first thing this morning. But keep an eye on those energy prices if they continue to rise. Um, that would be another sign of that falling dollar. So quite a few stocks out there to pay attention to. There's a lot of good patterns around the chart. I can't cover them all here. Um, so um, I want to wish you guys all a fantastic day today. Um, I will be here for the morning um, for those in right way options. I'll be here for the morning as we kind of sort through the details of, of the morning here on those economic reports. And then I'm probably going to go take uh, some time and rest here, um, get healed up here for the holiday. And um, I will be back around that, um, that um, uh, FOMC report to see if there's much of a reaction to that. So um, but it'll be kind of hit and miss today. So other than that, guys, I want to wish you all a fantastic holiday. You know, one of the reasons we become traders is to have that freedom, that lifestyle of the trader, to be able to spend more time with our family take that opportunity when the market's low volume, rather choppy, kind of a dangerous place to be. Take that time to be with your family. Enjoy the holiday. And I'll see you right back here, uh, bright and early Monday morning. Wish you guys all of the best. Eat lots of turkey or whatever it is that you celebrate with. And I'll see you first thing next week. Take care.